Hi, everyone, and welcome to this month's Netscaler Connect webinar. We have a fantastic session for you today. Alvin actually is going to talk to us um, about um, some Netscaler console uh, upgrade flows. We are going to, and this is really, um, this part actually really genuinely um, happy to see this because we're doing things in here um, that people will be doing manually every day when they do upgrades with Netscaler console. So, you know, some, some really fantastic changes in here. Um, Netscaler console grown from strength to strength. Um, Subhajit is going to talk to us about uh, SSL crypto. So this is something that um, we have been asked for um, ever since, actually, ever since we've had hardware cryptography uh, in our devices. So um, we're looking for utilization of that SSL hardware. So because we have an extra, you know, because we use a dedicated SSL um, hardware card in our devices, it's not mapped to CPU. And so getting the actual utilization of, out of that has been a bit of a calculation uh, up to now. But we have new ways of looking at that and, of course, being alerted if there are any potential issues. And lastly, beside me, uh, Van Kat here is going to talk to us about some tips and trips, tips and tricks for um, configuring WAF, um, how to make sure you size it appropriately, and so on. So uh, I'll hand over now to uh, Avinash, who's going to talk to us through some really super Netscaler console updates. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for taking me through here. Hi, everyone. My name is Avinash Kumar Pandey. I'm the product manager, product manager for the uh, Netscaler console. Uh, earlier, we used to call it as ADM. Uh, I look, look after the management, monitoring, and the platform for the console and any improvements around it. Uh, and uh, upgrade uh, job is one of the features within the uh, management uh, 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 ADMs or the console's management aspect when it tries to manage or manages all the net skaters which are uh, part of the uh, control plane of uh, console. And upgrade job is one of the uh, uh, tasks which is, is performed whether there are CV upgrades or whether there are um, CV being published or there are some uh, end of life firmware which being used or there are some uh, features or bugs which you know to uh, 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 go ahead and, and recover it from. In those situations, upgrade job is one of the most frequent use feature. So as we know, right, although we try to uh, leverage the upgrade job for all these, but upgrade also becomes a very critical um, part when, when we see in, in, in terms of overall Netscaler lifecycle management because Netscaler in production and we sometimes have to be very careful with when we upgrade, we perform a lot of checks, sanities to make sure the device goes through a smooth upgrade and if there are any issues happening, there should be uh, we should be aware of it and take the necessary steps or actions to recover the device and, and minimize the production outages. So uh, that's where this validation scripts plays a huge role. And it has been there for a long time, but it was kind of a green field uh, wherein you have been given a green field and choice of your configuration to put it across and see what all you want to validate. However, not everybody is aware and that's where this default configuration scripts are what we're gonna provide. So as you see under before the custom now in the same page, we have uh, given something called as the default validation scripts, which consists of namely six uh, categories we have defined it. First is the safe configuration. Second one is the running. Third is the network configuration. Fourth are the virtual server related configurations. Fifth is the system and last one being the global. So as you see by the name, most of them you will be able to follow. Uh, as we say, right, saved and running is something if you are able to validate before upgrade, after upgrade, after second node upgrade, and you are able to find the diff, 90% of the issues are identified if there are any changes in the conf due to the um, upgrade. However, if, if you feel that there are certain network related stuff like are being missing or some ACLs are out, or let's say if the virtual service configuration is there, but the state went down after the upgrade, or let's say there are system level parameters where your NTP is missing. So NTP is not part of NCONF. So let's say due to some issues or some bug in the firm where you upgrade and you're uh, or due to some reason NTP is missing. I'm just giving some examples here. Or if the hardware device comes up and SSL card is down. So these all are the scenarios which you want to be covered and want to know if, if these are the things which you want to recover back and, and 
try not to proceed with the upgrade and try to keep your uh, at least one device in healthy state now with this scripts i mean you can pretty much go ahead and all these cli commands are available across and if you are aware of well versed with it you can still use the custom validation scripts and configure this but based on the feedback from uh, a lot of customers we did the survey with and a lot of supportability case support cases open where customers were constantly giving feedback over this we have cu carefully cu curated six of six of these category but they are not limited because uh, your use case might be different from what we provide and you may cater more so that's where if you see today uh, rest all flows remain the same we just are helping you with them some inbuilt scripts if you want you can use all of these default scripts any one of them a collection of some of them or or you can actually go and select both the default and the custom script so all the combinations are allowed here and and so that you can leverage as much as as these scripts and validate so as you see right this is the overall uh, screenshot will in in a in, in a sometime we'll go through the live demo and see what all these um uh, uh individual uh, validation scripts contain but that's how it shows and if you see the definition itself we have mentioned what is the default and what is the custom scripts uh yeah so let's say if you want to look into the details of a virtual server what all we cover the moment you click on view details it will give you the details of all the configurations which you are capturing around the show so that post and let's say you have already run this in the pre validation which it will do you don't have to worry about earlier you have to select the pre post pre upgrade uh, uh, pre failover post upgrade second node pre failover or post failover so now you don't have to worry about configuring the moment you select default it will get applied for all those three and it will collect and post upgrade is done it will send out the report and with the diff reports across all these configurations or uh, the scripts which you are trying to collect and it will show you and you will come to know what are the differences yeah so this is the uh, upgrade job so all the flow there is no change everything remains same the only thing we are now facilitating is to help you with pre curated validated scripts or the configuration commands which you can you know use and and it will be by default running for all the three stages so let's say i give name validate i select one of the instances here or i can select multiple based upon my requirement on what all i want to upgrade then you have the option as i'm on the service version i can have the option for either selecting from the local or the say within the appliance or i, I have access to the resource library so there i will go for the latest let's say for the 13.1 build i have some sanity checks already enabled post upgrade clean up this uh, uh, firmware so that i'm not short of storages once the successful upgrade is done or if you want to save you can say uncheck it and it will save it now it will perform some of the pre validations as we all have been aware of it without if if there are certain criteria which doesn't passes the pre validation the upgrade will be blocked so that you are at the first level of defense only is is created so that you don't uh, fell into a, a unsuccessful upgrades like it checks for the hard disk spaces hard disk errors any configuration mismatches any network connectivity issues if you have some call classic policies like on 13.0 or 12.1 if you're still using it then those it will sh showcase you that you have and it need to be converted if you want to go to 13.1 or 14.1 per and then of course uh, if there are some customization it will flag it off so once everything is clean as you see it is not falling under any of the blocker items it is on the top which means my instance is ready for upgrade i click next now as you see right if i just hide this window for a minute this was what always available as a green field and uh, if you want you have to enable individual you have to fill in the commands individually or import it from the file and it has to be done for all the three stages now what we have done if you want to leverage this you can still do it however we have the default scripts wherein if you see right saved is pretty straightforward we want to contain the uh, uh, get the save so that if there are any changes uh, the save is the first line of um, defense where you will come to know any changes which has happened across the netscaler pre and post upgrade running is, is something we have carefully added it because at times we have seen customers uh, although there are options to save the config before upgrade and all those but they kind of choose so or they, if they let's say ignore or forget to turn it on 
So that's where it will help you to know if there are some unsaved configuration post upgrade. Uh, as we know, if the device reboots, it will be lost. So you will have these configurations in the dev reports and you can again restore those. So that's one of the examples I'm giving. Of course, in the network reports, if you want to check the interface status, channel status, all those things will be captured. If you want to look into the system configuration where what is this HA node, if the nodes are up, if they are healthy, if their heartbeats are coming, what is the version, what is the state and the state, then NTP, if the third key pairs which you have installed are present or not, if there's a cluster node, if, if the cluster node is up or not. And of course, there are some global parameters also we have curated here and captured like we, 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 uh, AAA parameters, LB, some global parameters. Often we have seen at times um, that some global parameter gets changes with the upgrade. So it will be easy to capture there because if you're, if it behave, change the behavior of how you're using that feature, then it matters a lot. So that, that's a pretty much uh, uh, straightforward uh, uh, improvement we have brought in into the default validation script and giving you an option to choose from rather than only you trying to you know, uh, do it from the uh, custom uh, uh, greenfield scripts where you have to curate it. Yeah, of course, I don't want to invest more, more time, but just wanted to share, share since we are on the upgrade job, you can do it scheduling upgrade it now and then of course you have all the host of options and reports if you want to get it generated of course you have to you can have option to either receive it through email or it through the slacks so that once you receive you can have all the visibility of different type of diff reports as i said right for all the three stages it performs and you will have those to review and and take the informed decision if there are any changes uh that's it uh ronan isha from mine brilliant so yeah this is uh, exactly what um, our customers are telling us, uh, you know, if you're in charge of an important production platform, you do an upgrade, um, you just, you know, you want that self-assurance that, you know, all the config is there, everything is there, everything is up and running as it should be. Um, and this is an automatic process to do that, right? So this will, you know, helping us use Netscaler console for those, um, those power users among us who said, you know, okay, console is okay, but I need to do extra things you know, when I'm doing my upgrade, I want to run a script beforehand. I want to look at something afterwards. Okay, you can do all of that now with Netscape Console. So, um, uh, fantastic uh, um, enhancement, making Netscape Console more powerful um, and enabling our users to do safer upgrades. Brilliant. Thank you, Avinash, yeah, for that. Very well summarized. Yeah, I would say very well summarized, Ronan. Thanks. All right, brilliant. Okay, so uh, I think Subhajit is going to take us through um, the wonderful world of SSL encryption and into um, the super high performance that you get with Netscaler SSL offload with our dedicated SSL offloading hardware. Subhajit, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ronald. So yeah, warm greetings to each and everyone. I'm Subhajit Goswami, part of the Netscaler product management team. And along with me, we have Ramaprasad, Ramaprasad N, that is, uh, uh, he is the lead software engineer. And I'm going to take you through one of the major feature updates for, with respect to Core ADC uh, that has recently come in the latest uh, build, that is 14.117.38, that is alerting and monitoring of crypto utilization for better handling of unforeseen events. So before jumping into what this feature is and what all it entails, let's just start with the basic question that why are we even doing this and what is it in the first place like what it it all uh, you know in uh, talks about so uh first and foremost to begin with there are two types of crypto utilization uh, that needs to be tracked one is the asymmetric crypto utilization and the other is the symmetric crypto utilization so the following is a typical tls wanted to handshake that you can see on the screen itself where the asymmetric crypto uh, a cryptography comes into picture during the key exchange part and it is computationally intensive and expensive task to carry out whereas the symmetric crypto uh, cryptography comes into picture after the handshake has happened and with the bulk data transfer that is happening over a secure ch channel and an, and an encrypted channel so the thing is that a symmetric crypto utilization should indeed be tracked as it is compute intensive and expensive to carry out whereas symmetric crypto utilization should be tracked due to the task of encryption of bulk data uh, which together all in all could choke an application or where application could struggle if it uh, exceeds beyond uh, limits. So this is the whole intent 
mentioned that why we want to track these things and we can may, maybe uh, you know mitigate some unforeseen events or take corrective actions actions based on them so keeping in line with that same thought process we, these are the three key use cases that we're trying to address first and foremost in this modern day and age for every organization uh, with exponential growth and as they you know grow they would have to adopt a more security posture regarding that more traffic would come into the organization and so on and so forth hence capacity planning is of paramount importance so with this intent use case how you do you do that first and foremost you would need alerts so we are providing us nmp alerts to track the script utilization uh, before it breaches the threshold and you can take corrective actions subsequently uh, based on those also we are providing you object identifiers to see the current value of those two types of script utilization whether it be asymmetric or symmetric so this is the uh, these are the major three use cases that we are trying to address with the help of this feature i just want to take you through a very simplified config flow which is, uh, rather I would, or i would say this is all that you need to do to uh, en uh, enable this feature so for you to enable this feature on the gui first you need to go to the system then you need to go to snmp then you go need to go to alarms and over there in alarms you would be able to see these two uh, alarms present over here after the implementation after this feature has come about that is the asymmetric cryptization and crypto and asymmetric crypto utilization so you just click into them and edit edit them uh, and where you configure the snmp alarm with various parameters for example the alarm threshold the threshold with which when which when breached it would trigger the alarm then the normal threshold a baseline we, uh, our, a baseline for you to track if the when the crypto utilization would come to the baseline it will again trigger your alarm so you could understand what is the range that is going the highest threshold to the baseline and uh, and and just enable them and click okay so this is all that you need to do in order for you to uh, leverage this uh, feature for your uh, uh, for, for 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 n number of purposes that you would want now this particular feature is uh, only for intel Coleto and Lewisburg platforms, essentially all the MPXs and SDXs which are having the Intel Coleto and Lewisburg SQL chipset in them. So for the MPX part, it's pretty straightforward as I uh, uh, as I just explained how you have to uh, you know enable them. The enabling is similar over, over the SDX as well, but there's some scenarios that I want to uh, touch upon and throw some light on. And later on, we would look a uh, very detailed demo as to how we are actually leveraging this feature and you know tracking these script utilizations. But currently, when I uh, uh, the, for, from the SDX perspective, let's just go through some of the scenarios. So let's just imagine uh, uh, for a for a SDX box, hundred k are the total crypto units allocated to it. On top of that, SDX you have spun up VPX1, VPX2, VPX3, and the admin has provided 50k uh, crypto units to VPX1, uh, 25k to VPX2, and uh, 25k to VPX3. Now, the point here is that you have to enable, uh, or shall I say, you have to put that threshold uh, uh, on top of which the alarm would get triggered if that threshold gets breached. So, for example, the admin believes, from uh, the admin of an organization believes that 80% threshold uh, with respect to consumption of the uh, crypto utilization, uh, the, the consumption of traffic and the uh, crypto utilization is should be tracked uh, based on which corrective action should be taken into account. So he or she just simply goes and in, uh, puts that threshold of 80% on all the three VPX, so that VPX1, VPX2, VPX3, because the, on VPX only you can put that. It can't be done on the SDX. It can't be done on the SDX. So in that case, uh, Imagine VPX1 is having the the bulk of the traffic going through it. So it touches the 80% threshold and then the alarm gets triggered on VPX1. In this case, VPX2 and VPX3 are not having any uh, traffic coming towards them. So it remains uh, as it is with no triggering of the alarm. The red shows the red, the red signifies the alarm being triggered. The green shows that alarm not being triggered. So this is a fairly normal use case. It's all fine. A use case. It's all fine with this. But the issue comes when you simply blindly put a threshold in uh, when it comes to SDX uh, on all the VPX that are spun over the SDX is this. Here is a problem. So imagine you have uh, keeping, in, keeping in with the same line that the admin has put 80% threshold in all the three VPXs because it believes that 80% is the threshold after which being breached, uh, uh, there, should, there can be problems. Should, it should be tracked. So you have put 80% threshold on all three of them. But in this use case, uh, in this particular scenario, VPX1 is just simply consuming 40% of the total 100K uh, uh, crypto units allocated to SDX. 
Prepix 2 is consuming 25% of the total 100k uh, crypto units allocated to SDX. And similarly, Prepix 3 is consuming only 15%. Since you have put 80% on all the three VPXs blindly, none of them will trigger any alarm. But if you check cumulatively, it has already reached 80% of the total 100k. Hence, this is an issue. So this is the very basic reason that I wanted to throw some light on these scenarios because what we are providing, and it has been properly documented, and you can just go to the docs and I will provide the link uh, very shortly. Uh, we are providing you the basic way to calculate the correct threshold that an admin should put when it comes to the VPXs over SDX. The current way to put the thresholds on the VPXs over SDX is that the crypto unit that is allocated by the admin when the VPX is spun on the SDX, for example, for VPX1, it is 50K into the, to the, the, the threshold value that you believe should be tracked uh, with, uh, with respect to the entire SDX box, that is 80%. So that is essentially 50 into 0 0.8, that would come to 40%. In the same manner, 20%. In the same manner for VPX3, 20%. Bear in mind, this is not the uh, tr uh, consumption of the crypto utilization, but these are the ideal uh, thresholds that the admin should put, cons uh, keep uh, taking in account this particular formula. In this case, <clears throat> the, the alarms would definitely get triggered and the problem that was there in the scenario two that I just showed just before this is mitigated. How? So, the moment uh, you, you see forty percent hits VPX, uh, the, the moment uh, VPX one consumes or uh, consumes forty percent of the total uh, um, uh, crypto allocation of the SDX, the alarm will get triggered. Same for VPX two when it becomes twenty percent, and same for VPX three when it becomes twenty percent. As you can see, this cumulatively has also reached eighty percent. So we are providing you the uh, the proper way to calculate the uh, thresholds that should be configured for each VPX is spun over the STX. And most certainly you can visit the link which I'll sh shortly put for you to get more details uh, on this. So let's just quickly jump onto the demo and uh, I'll, I'll take you through how we are uh, 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 you know, leveraging this particular feature. So to begin with, this first, first uh, CLI screen on the top left is the primary CLI screen of the NetScaler. Here, uh, I'm just showcasing that it is the latest build, and these particular <clears throat> two crypto, uh, uh, two SNMP alarms are not set yet. The, the This particular screen uh, is the, another CLI screen that we will be checking the alarms. And the uh, this particular screen on the, to uh, the lower left is where we will be generating the traffic. And the last screen is was basically to check the current value. Now, uh, current value of the crypto relations. Now, it is, uh, we are going to the UI screen to follow the same flow that I just showed a little bit back, a uh, little while back for you to enable the alarms. So for crypto, we are putting, we are putting the alarm threshold as 25 and the normal base value as 15. Similarly, for symmetric crypto utilization, we're putting alarm as, uh, the threshold value is five and the base value is two. And with that, we have enabled the SNMP alarms. So we can just check these are enabled right now. <clears throat> and uh, it does bear the same threshold and the base values that we just put on uh, uh, that, that we just configured using the UI. So currently, before we generate the traffic, we just want to check using the statistical command that there is no utilization of both the symmetric and asymmetric crypto utilizations, cr uh, crypto units. But now with this client machine, we will try to generate the traffic. And once the traffic has been generated, again, via the statistical command, we can see now very well that the asymmetric crypto utilization has already breached the 25 value and is now 41. Hence, you can see on the right-hand screen, uh, the trap, the, the alarm has been set, the alarm has been triggered. Over here, using this OID, the lower uh, screen, you can see the current value as well, as I'm highlighting 41 and, the, and, and for the symmetric, it's two. And it matches with our statistical command as well. So now I'm just stop, stopping the traffic. And as we stop the traffic, we can see it has again triggered an alarm because it has it has touched the base value that we've set about the asymmetric crypto utilization that is 15. And we can see the current value has dropped to zero. And this particular screen is basically an SNMP manager, which is an open source tool, the extreme lower right. And yeah, that's about it for the demo. And uh, I hope it, uh, and I hope uh, you were you were able to understand how we are leveraging this feature, and uh, it is an indeed great addition to our 
uh, CISL stack in, with respect to uh, measuring and tracking and taking corrective actions with respect to the crypto utilization. So thank you so much. And uh, over to you. Brilliant, Sujit. Yeah, it's, it's, it shows you how, you know, when we do multi-tenancy uh, with Netscaler, like we do consider everything. It's not just individual devices. Uh, you know, you'd have like running on a hypervisor. We are considering the, the SDX platform as a whole and what's available and uh, providing alerts to you uh, based on that, with that and awareness of the whole platform. So I guess that's another difference that we have, uh, and especially when it comes to naturally SSL offloading on the SDX, we often get asked, you know, what's the difference between having my own appliance, um, you know, running any hypervisor, KVM or whatever, or Citrix Zen server, um, and, um, and running uh, the SDX, and of course, SSL hardware uh, offloading that's available to the VPX is, is the, the main answer with that. And of course, we have yes. that in there. Super. Um, okay, so uh, now we are going to um, wind up uh, today with um, Bankat, who's going to talk to us about WAF. There we go. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Good morning and good evening. And uh, I'm going to speak about the resource management of WAF. So uh, in, this, in this era where uh, web publication is, have become very indispensable and uh, has to be secured, the very important part is has to secure the application and the digital assets. So WAF is the go-to solution which, uh, which is used for analyzing and uh, scrutinize the, all the incoming and outgoing packets, bytes and bits, and uh, that, of course, com comes with the cost of uh, processing power. So in this presentation, we will look at how to effectively manage and uh, uh, the resource management, the resources that are available on the NetScaler with respect to CPU, memory, and disk. And uh, let's go further. So strategizing the resource management. So when it comes to WAF, we have various security models like uh, positive, negative, and hybrid. So the, in the positive model, you block all the traffic and allow only what you want. But in the negative security model, you allow everything but block what you don't want. And in the hybrid security model, you can take advantage of both positive and negative. So Netscaler gives and uh, offers the opportunity to co configure the hybrid model where you can take advantage of both positive and negative model, negative security models. Going further, you need to, after choosing the security model that you're going to deploy, you have to choose the right application type that, you are, that your application is. For this, you can take help from, as a NetScaler administrator, you can take help from your application owners and developers and identify the type of application that you're going to protect using WAF. And this would help in uh, configuring the resources whether it be it a VPX or MPX or hardware, it, it would really help to understand the application, what type of application that you're going to secure. Further, this is the page where you will be configuring the profile, where in the, under the profile type, you can uh, choose the application type. It's a web application where you're going, it's going to, we have a security checks like uh, start URL, deny URL, which is used to protect the application. We have XML application type where if the incoming packet has a HTTP content header with XML, those packet will be inspected and it will be protected. And we have JSON security type. And going further, you have to configure the default security checks can enable basics or advanced security checks. So the basic security checks which is mostly for a static website where uh, the security checks like uh, SQL injection and uh, the start URL may be applied. And uh, this is going to be, uh, this is not going to be resource intensive. It is going to do the basics checks. But when you are going into advanced, you have to, very, you have to be very careful in choosing the advanced security checks, which are, uh, is going to which are resource intensive and it is going to consume the process depending on the security checks that you are going to enable. And uh, going further, 
So we are, uh, so here are a few considerations for sizing the WAF deployment. So first one is current utilization. So as from a support team, I have uh, re received cases reporting from the customer claiming that after enabling WAF, so the, the NetScaler was running fine for a long time. And once we enable WAF, we are facing issues. So this is the first point you need to understand. Like what is the current utilization? What are all the modes that are enabled on WAF? Modes that are enabled on NetScaler. So you might be having a gateway solution. You have uh, you might have enabled AAA and also the SSL, which are uh, already consuming the process. On top of it, if you enable WAF, of course, it's going to be more resource intensive. So if you're going to enable WAF, you have to make sure that you're you are sizing the device properly, be it the hardware, if you, if you are using your hardware for your regular application, then you have to consider upgrading your hardware. Or if you are using your VPX, you have to uh, think about uh, increasing the packet engine size, packet in increase the number of packet engine and increase the memory. And uh, secondly, the number of application that WAF needs to protect. So say that you are having like a 10 different application that you're going to protect. You don't have to enable all the 10 applications at a time, and then uh, that can lead to uh, uh, consuming a lot of CPU. In that case, you can enable one by one and see how, how it performs, how the resources are consumed. And thirdly, the number of get versus the post request. Just uh, you have to keep in mind that the get request are uh, are just going to render the page and uh, it's not going to consume a lot of resource. But when it comes to post request, the NetScaler is going to receive the packet, then going going to parse the content and it is going to inspect the content, which is going to consume both memory and CPU. So if your application is going to receive a lot of post request for the applications such as uh, collaborative tools or social media platform or any dynamic applications that are receiving a lot of post requests, then you have to size the NetScaler accordingly. And next is the security checks that you're going to deploy. So start with the basic checks, which are for a non-session non based and the session based. Non-session based are the basic security checks and the session based are the advanced security checks. So the non-session based are basically for the static websites and session based are for the advanced or or uh, the dynamic websites. Like if you're filling in a form and uh, the user session is going to be established with the server and the server, the session has to be maintained. So the session would be having the user preferences, user authentication information, and uh, uh, the user information has to be protected there. So this is in this case you have to choose the session based or advanced security checks, and uh, uh, but be careful in selecting the security checks because like no, you should not select all the advanced security checks. The only the security checks that are actually necessary for the application should only be chosen. And then comes to the package size. So from the support perspective, I often receive issues complaining that. Uh, I am uploading 100 MB file, but the file upload is struck at 80 percentage and um, it's not moving over. And also it is the NetScaler is responding. So yeah, of course, you have to enable streaming in this case. So if you are uploading any file, like if the user is uploading file more than 20 MB, a streaming has to, the streaming feature on the NetScaler, on the NetScaler RAF profile has to be enabled. And uh, streaming, when you're enabling this streaming feature, make sure that your application side, the backend application side, is supporting chunked data. So in this case, the, the packet will be sent in chunks, and the NetScaler receives the chunks and inspect the chunks. So, so in that case, it is not going to consume or uh, take uh, the entire packet, the load, the payload, and it is not going to inspect the entire payload. It is going to inspect in chunks. So this. Uh, this way you can be optimize the uh, resources that the that are used in the NetScaler. And the, the next solution will be the uh, using the post body limit. The post body limit, you can mention the amount of 
uh, the post body content that need to be inspected by the net scaler and rest beyond which can be bypassed and finally it you have to consider the number of signatures that need to be enabled on the web so we, we are, net scaler inbuilt provides a various uh, set of signature for various categories web categories so you have to enable the signatures that are required and recently we have a development with the uh, the WAF recommendation engine, which is on the NetScaler console, which is previously called ADM. So this WAF recommendation engine is going to help you to, uh, uh, to figure out what signatures are actually needed, signature and security checks that are needed to be deployed on your net. So in this WAF, WAF recommendation engine, you just give the start URL, the protocol type, the login URL, and a couple of parameters that it is asking. And uh, when you click on you submit it, it is going to crawl through the website and it understands the underlying OS, underlying server, underlying application type, and it understands everything itself. And it is going to recommend you with a set of signatures and security checks that need to be enabled. So it is going to, uh, going to make, uh, make it easy for you to deploy the security uh, uh, the security checks and the signatures for your WAF deployment. So once everything is done, before going into production, we strongly recommend to enable the logging mode. So in the logging mode, the NetScaler, so what logging lo learning mode does? The NetScaler WAF learns normal traffic, like it, it used to learn the traffic that are incoming traffic and it identifies what are the normal traffic and what are all malicious traffic and it protects accordingly. So uh, when you, after you deploy the setup, you start the learning mode on the security checks and we strongly recommend you to do it on the pre-production. And once you start deploy, or uh, once you have deployed uh, the setup and started learning, like uh, enabled learning on the WAF, WAF profile, the WAF profile, the WAF engine is going to learn the data that learn all the incoming data, and thereby you can specify the trusted clients so that from the whatever the packets the request coming from the trust, trusted clients are are conveniently bypassed because you are trusting them. So thereby the resources, the inspector resources that are going to be consumed for inspection is saved there. And uh, uh, once you have learned the data, you can relax, you can go to the rules, check the rules, and you can relax whatever the data you think that are valid, valid whatever the requests that are valid, you can uh, relax them. Otherwise, the, those will be blocked. And uh, note that it is going to, it's not going to consume more than 20 MB. So the database file, the learning database file is going to be, the maximum fi file size, the size is going to be 20 MB. So whenever you see the learning data, make sure that you go and deploy them or relax them so that the, the space is cleared and the database is free to learn more data. And uh, yeah, that is, that is all from my side. Over to you, Ranan. Thank you. Brilliant. Super. <clears throat> all right. So that's um, uh, NetScaler WAF. So just a few things on that. So streaming mode, we heard that being mentioned there earlier on. Um, so streaming mode is something that um, uh, we have used to increase or make Netscaler the fastest, um, fastest possible WAF on the market. So lots of WAFs, what they do is they read in either a request or a response, and they have to read the whole thing into the buffer, and then they'll scan it and they'll uh, and they'll analyze that. Um, that takes a lot of resources. You have to read the whole file in. Whereas with streaming, we just read in a small section of it, check it for security alerts uh, and any security issues, and then we let that piece go on. So this is why chunking is required. Um, as my cat said, you know, ch chunking is needed to be supported on the backend application. Uh, chunking is a HTTP uh, 1.1, but it's part of the HTTP 1.1 protocol. So it's nothing bespoke that we're doing, uh, but just sometimes some applications don't like uh, when we do that. And you can see that in the header, you'll see chunking uh, is enabled, so you can tell that it's uh, that that's there. But streaming, um, this is what allows us to, to almost double our performance in terms of performance speed. Uh, we introduced it um, several years ago, 
So it's quite a mature technology that we have there. Also, yeah, the, the, uh, the WAF recommendation engine, and uh, this is super, uh, again, from Netscaler console. Simplicity is an overarching theme of what we're doing with security. We're just making it easier for you to get more secure without having to know the nuts and bolts of every single application. Um, so, um, you know, you'll, uh, you'll see that with the, um, with the recommendation engine, I, I can have a, a backend service maybe plugged in, you know, running a, a Linux box. I run my, uh, my scan. After about two minutes, I get a list of suggested signatures. Hey, yeah, you need to apply you know, Apache signatures. You need to apply PHP signatures. Um, I can then disable that service and re-enable a second service that may be running IIS, Windows, uh, .NET application. Run my scan. Two minutes later, they say, oh, no, now you need these signatures here. Right? So it, it, it's, it's very simple. Uh, it allows you to only enable the signatures that you need to enable um, uh, to get the full, the full level um, of uh, protection. Brilliant. And, and lastly, learning mode. So yeah, learning mode is super. This is uh, for building that uh, positive security model. So part of our hybrid security, positive security model is, um, gives you the highest level of security. And learning uh, just helps you get around those, any of those false positives that pop up. Um, so, you know, when you have to create an exception to a rule, um, you know, say, well, actually, you we do want to allow this, it helps, it'll help you build those easily. Now, uh, moving on, lastly, to the Netscaler community. So, uh, please, as usual, uh, you probably got here through the community, sign up, uh, ask questions. Uh, here's where you can find um, all of the uh, resources that you need. Um, you will notice uh, coming, uh, going forward, uh, there will be a, a change to the look and feel of our community site. Um, so uh, we foresee that we're going to um, have uh, a lot of our existing Citrix customers. Uh, we envisage a lot of them are going to be deploying a lot more Netscaler. Um, so in terms of consistency uh, and welcoming them, um, you'll see that uh, we'll make some changes, but Netscaler uh, live demo, Netscaler Connect is still there. You can still find us by going to netscaler.com um, slash community uh, or community.netscaler.com. Uh, you will uh, end up at the right place. Um, but we do envisage that. So um, check back in. We have some exciting announcements um, coming out soon. So we'll be able to fill you in on those on the next Netscaler Connect sessions. All right. So um, yeah, just be aware of that. Uh, you'll see some changes coming through on that. Brilliant. And um, so that is about uh, it for us at the moment. I'd like to say thank you to Avinash for doing a brilliant Netscaler console um, update on that. So uh, being able to be more flexible and be more friendly in terms of rolling out upgrades with a uh, Netscaler console. Thank you to Subhijit talking, taking us through SSL and uh, Vankat here beside me. This is the first time we've had two people in one window yeah. on a Netscaler uh, Connect. Um, so yeah, thank you, Bangkok, for doing the, the, the WAP overview. All right, guys. Thanks very much. And see you at the next session.